good evening friends praise the lord praise the lord oh my soul i will praise the lord as long as i live i will sing praises to my god all my life long welcome to the sunday evening worship today we celebrate the 22nd sunday after trinity reverend dr david joseph roj professor in the department of history of christianity will lead us in the worship service he and his guru sishya fellowship members will help us to worship god this evening let us quiet on ourselves and prepare our hearts and minds to serve the lord and worship the lord good evening friends greetings to you all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ i on behalf of our guru sishya fellowship welcome you for this evening worship service this sunday evening worship service we observe dalit liberation sunday worship unity sunday holy spirit god the giver of life at the beginning of time you gave every living thing the breath of life come create a spirit and renew your whole creation holy spirit spirit of unity reconcile your people give us wisdom give us grace give us a vision of your breadth and length and height to challenge our stubbornness and bring us humbly together hum holy spirit reconcile us holy spirit spirit of peace you break down barriers of languages caste race and culture and heal the divisions that separate us come reconciling spirit and unite us in all in the love of jesus christ holy spirit spirit of justice deliver us from oppression from discrimination and from injustice give us the strength to treat other with love and kindness come holy spirit restore justice holy spirit transform us and sanctify us as we take up your cross in your name give us the gifts we need to be your servants in spirit and truth come holy spirit come into us let us pray god of justice the liberator who breaks the wall of oppression and slavery who seeks equality and love among all human kind and in whom all beings exist and are sustained speak to us afresh through this worship renew our strength help us to eradicate ourselves to administer justice daily in our lives and to deliver the oppressed from violence discrimination and unjust human acts god of justice and dignity we seek your divine spirit that enables us to express our faith in our own way give us the freedom to choose celebrate and worship as creatures made in your image give us a spirit of understanding so that we can claim our fight to worship you give us the courage and power to confess our faith in a dignified and responsible way we seek your divine presence with us throughout this worship so that our lives become blessed in jesus christ name we pray amen for the glory of god let's all join together and sing the hymn rescue the perishing care for the dying rescue the perishing care for the dying Yeah. 
is merciful, Jesus will save. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, feelings lie buried that grace can restore. Touched by a loving heart, wakened by kindness, chords that are broken. Vibrate once more Rescue the perishing Care for the dying Jesus is merciful Jesus will save Rescue the perishing Let us confess our sin. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us examine ourselves and with penitent heart, let us confess sincerely. Let us take a moment of silence. Let us read together, God who administers justice, who delivers the oppressed, and who desires human to continue this mission. We repent before you, for we have failed to administer justice and to deliver the oppressed. We confess that many a times we have considered our Dalit brothers and sisters as inferior beings and failed to consider them as our co-equals. We are sorry, for we have stood silent as mute witnesses to injustice and abuse of the rights and dignity of Dalits around us. We have named your name, but have not departed from practicing inequality. Forgive us our competency, our silence, our reluctance, our inaction. Forgive us and may our Dalit brothers and sisters forgive and pardon us too. God of everyone, we confess that as Dalits, we ourselves have degraded our abilities and have allowed ourselves to be humiliated. We have failed to stand up for our own rights. We have failed to say no when we ought to have done so. We have considered ourselves inferior beings and have failed to embrace the beauty in us. We pray you will mold us to be brave and bold to say no to unjust act, to find strength in ourselves and move forward with confidence and confidence and deliver ourselves from oppressions. May the forgiving God pardon our sins. May our Dalit brothers and sisters forgive us. May the God of all righteousness give us strength and wisdom to administer justice daily and be an agent to deliver the oppressed. May the God who empowered Israelites empower you and forgive your sins through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Churches in India, represented by the National Council of Churches in India and the Catholic Bishops Conference of India, joined together in this pandemic year 2020 to challenge, caste and affirm the dignity of the Dalit women. The observance of the Dalit Liberation Sunday this year on 8th November 2020 will focus on challenging caste, affirming the dignity of Dalit women. Dalit Liberation Sunday is an annual joint observance. The Roman Catholic, Protestant and Orthodox Churches in India consider that this deep-rooted hegemonic discriminative oppression of people based on work and descent is by far the single largest structured oppressive system in the whole world. Its prevalence, domination 
and perpetuation in all walks of life have to be continually challenged. The theme, challenging caste, affirming the dignity of Dalit women, calls the churches or institutions to denounce caste-based gender violence as an abrasion of the very fabric of society and reflect on Jesus' call to be a community that believes and lives the kingdom, values of love, justice, equality, peace, reconciliation and communion. Dalit women suffer both gender and caste-based violence. The caste system declares Dalit women to be intrinsically impure and untouchable which sanctions social exclusion and exploitation. The recent case of brutality against humanity in the form of a gang rape and assaulting of 19 years young Dalit girl in Hathras district of Uttar Pradesh leading to her death is an example. Every time a Dalit woman or a woman of any so-called lower caste is subjected to a sexual violence, it becomes clear that the prevailing structure of caste and status of women in society are largely responsible for the violation of their human rights. For Dalit women, violence is almost always associated with their caste positions and also depends on how they behave within the system. Their resistance to or dissent towards the caste structure often triggers the violence. Due to the caste hierarchy, dominant caste men have a perceived right over Dalit women's bodies while gender inequality and subordination norms play an important role in the perpetuation of marital rape and in caste sexual assault. Dalit women are considered to be available sexually to any dominant caste man. Additionally, the use of forced temple prostitution and trafficking are major concern for the young Dalit girls. Sexual exploitation of Dalit women is a common occurrence due to their low socioeconomic status and dominant caste members take advantage of their power and authority over them. Violence and inhuman treatment such as sexual assault, rape and naked parading serve as a social mechanism to maintain Dalit women's subordination position in society. They are targeted by dominant castes as a way of humiliating entire Dalit communities. Human rights abuses against Dalit women are mostly committed with impunity. Police personnel often neglect or deny Dalit women of their right to seek legal and judicial aid. In many cases, the judiciary fails to enforce the laws that protect Dalit women from discrimination. It is shameful and unfortunate that even 73 years of independence, the patriarchal structure of society has refused to alter. Violence, sexual harassment, rape are crucial mechanisms to show Dalit women their position in society. Thank you, friends. Today's scripture reading are from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 15. But we have this treasure in clay jaws, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted but not for a second, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. But just as we have the same spirit of faith, this is accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake. So that grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good evening friends. It is indeed a great privilege to share the word of God in our historical college chapel. At the outset, I would like to thank our beloved Principal Anand 
our beloved chaplain and faculties, students, non-teaching staffs, college council, families, alumni. I want to thank Reverend Kanagaraj, Reverend Jogana, Dr. Arabin, those who involved the worship recording and editing works and the Guru Shishya students friends. Today Sunday evening worship observes as Dalit Liberation Sunday along with Unity Sunday. I would like to entitle the theme Treasurer in Clay Jones, Breathe the Breath of God. Let us look to God in prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer. Amen. I would like to read the key verse of our reflection. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 says, But we have this treasurer in clay jaws, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. But we have this treasurer in clay jaws, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. Treasurer in clay jaws, breathe the breath of God. It's a hopeful thought that though there are pains and challenges on one side of human life and on, uh, on the other side, the presence of and powerful God is there. We suffer all difficulties but not crushed. The present day context, the COVID-19 and the Dalit discrimination, oppression, so many issues are going on. We are in difficulties but not in despair. We suffer but not neglected, fallen down but not destroyed because the life of Jesus Christ is revealed in our bodies. This power is God's gift. We are not worthy for that, but it is like a treasurer given in a clay jar. This is how St. Paul observes the kingdom of God that pervades in human being. This is the experience of the kingdom of God. Therefore, Paul says that whenever suffering increase, consolation is also given. You can see 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse says clearly the consolation portrayed there. Let us remember the mighty act of God that helped to dry up even the Red Sea of his people. So let us praise God for giving us this treasure in these clay jars. If you look, the Corinth was an important and wealthy city on the Isthmus separating northern and southern Greece. The Apostle Paul spent 18 months there on his second missionary journey and established a church there. Acts chapter 18 gives us considerable detail about Paul's work in Corinth during that time. In Paul's time, the city of Corinth was known for pottery. By Paul's time, the industry was already centuries old with a reputation of exceeded pottery. Corinth was a major city in the Roman Empire situated on a major east-west trade route which allowed Corinthian pottery to end up all over empire. Most of the surviving vessels produced in Corinth have been found lower Italy and Sicily. Second Corinthians is the fourth letter that Paul wrote to the Christian community in Corinth church. Paul's relationship with the Corinthian Christians is in crisis and he hopes to mend it with his letter. He had originally evangelized the Corinthians and considered himself their spiritual parent. Yet he wrote 1st Corinthian, other teachers have come to Corinth with letters of recommendation and have been teaching doctrines and contradicted Paul's message. They also have personally criticized Paul's behavior and indulged in ad hominem attacks. Paul made a quick visit to Corinth 
in order to correct the situation but it turned out to be very painful from what we can glean from the text of second corinthians he was harshly criticized and offended by the believers and the corinthians did not defend him after this painful visit he sent a letter to the corinthians against his opponents second corinthians follows this harsh letter and anticipate paul's arrival at corinth for his third missionary journey here i would like to portray four important aspects the first aspect jars of clay jars of clay isaiah chapter 64 verse 8 says that o lord you are our father we are the clay you are our potter we are all the work of your hand the bible is filled with symbolism and metaphors clay pots are today called stoneware or pottery moist clay is formed into the vessel on a potter's wheel after the clay is baked a high temperature a vessel becomes useful each one is unique scarves of broken earthen vessels help archaeologists date the time ancient times were inhabited and tell a story about the people who made and used these clay vessels recently in tamil nadu the keeladi uh, archaeological excavations clearly portrayed how the people used the vessels in their day to day life in the old testament times people put things of importance in earthen or clay vessels not just liquids jeremiah chapter 32 verse 14 says that thus says the lord of ghosts the god of israel take these deeds but both the sealed deeds purchase and this open deed and put them in an earthen way, jar in order that they may last for long time biblical treasures and documents like the dead sea scrolls were placed in the clay pots and remained protected for some 2000 years but in the text apostle paul is not saying he and the corinthians were protecting a literal treasure in literal pots what is he saying first let us look at the word jar or clay vessel acts chapter 9 verse 15 says that but the lord said to him go for he is instrument whom i have chosen to bring by name before gentiles and kings and before the people of israel jesus christ spoke to ananias in a vision and he is talking about saul who became the apostle paul he calls saul a vessel or instrument a jar of clay so a vessel or a clay pot in scripture can relate to a human being and it is an apt symbol or metaphor because life itself is fragile easily broken just like a stone pot the word jar or of clay or vessel carries with it the idea of someone the master can use in his service that's the thought of words in the kim it's the line goes like this a broken and empty vessel for the master's use made and meet the second aspect is treasure the first sense treasure refers to the place where goods and precious things are stored for safe keeping and thus a repository place room or container where something is deposited or stored a treasure chest a storehouse a treasury the second sense of treasure refers to that which is stored up in treasury of repository matthew chapter 2 verse 1 verse 11 matthew chapter 6 verse 19 to 21 luke chapter 12 verse 33 so these two sense made clearly about what treasure mean to us figuratively treasure can refer to the heart as the 
repository of thoughts, feelings, purpose, etc. You can see the Luke chapter 6 verse 45, Matthew chapter 12 verse 35, we can see the it referred to the heart. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 7 says then, Thesaurus clearly refers to the priceless hospital with which all believers have been interested. Remember that when Jesus entrusted the stewards with valuables, he expected them to use them wisely, which is so convicting for how frequently I give out this priceless treasure to those who are spiritually destitute. The English definition of treasurer derived from Latin thesaurus, which means anything hoarded, treasurer, storehouse, collection, etc. Something of great worth or value. The English word thesaurus comes from the thesaurus, a treasury of words, a great quantity of anything collected for future use. Something or someone very much valued or highly priced. Wealth and riches usually stored, especially in the form of money, precious metals or gems and documents. A treasure is something of great value. Usually, this word makes us think of financial riches, piles and piles of gold and jewels. But that is not Paul's concern at all. The treasurer he speaks of is the treasure of gospel of Jesus Christ, the glory of God to the world. That God through his son decides to bring these sinful creatures called men and women into a restored relationship with him forever and ever and ever. Breathe the breath of God. The third aspect, the surpassing power we are being renewed day by day, surpassing power, we are being renewed day by day. Paul, this fragile, weak jar of clay, actually walks in power, in courage and strength. Power to forgive those who don't deserve it. Power to love the unlovely. Power for boldness in the face of fear. Power to preserve in extreme hardship and you too can testify like Paul the surpassing power comes from God not from me verse 8 to 12 now he described in more detail the suffering he has endured for the Jesus Christ the theme of these five verses in death and resurrection verse 8 says we are afflicted in every way but not crushed, reflected, but not driven to despair. Verse 9 says, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Verse 10 says, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus Christ, so that the life of Jesus Christ may also be manifested in our bodies. Verse 11 says, for we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus sake so that the life of Jesus Christ also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Here conclude with the verse 12 says so death is at work in us but life in you. So these are the five important verses in the theme of death and resurrection. Paul has suffered extensively for Jesus Christ's ministry sake actually horrifically. Yet, he has not lost hope. He does not despair. He has not lost heart. Why? Because Jesus Christ, through the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit, gives Paul's life and power and hope right when it feels like he could die. I would like to take a moment to note that nowhere in the passage does Paul indicate that God removed suffering from his life. Nor does he say that his suffering was caused by his lack of faith. This passage is all about real, raw, lived suffering. Life is hard. Is it in pain is real and valleys are rocky. Every day in the name of 
so many things we are facing lot of struggles language caste class color and so on so what paul does says i believed and i spoke second corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 says paul could speak about god's goodness and faithfulness through the valleys because he had experienced god's work and ways before there is another truth in this passage that we must not miss verse 16 says this so we do not lose heart though our outer nature is wasting away our inner nature is being renewed day by day this word being day by day it is an ever increasing renewal but it gets better like a treasure in clay jars the potter also we can made renew every day god is the agent our hope is set we can join paul in saying we have this treasure in jars of clay because we have the power of holy spirit going before us renewing us whatever comes our way dear ones the day to day life is very hard every day we face lot of troubles but know this we have treasure in these jars of clay the holy spirit is at to work in us and we can be living testimony to the lost as well as other believers of god's goodness when we choose to live by faith and not lost heart the fourth aspect the final one treasure in the clay jars god's expectation treasure in the clay jars god's expectation if you look the old testament reading micah chapter 6 verse 1 to 8 psalms 10 to 1 to 12 god leads his people delivering from the house of bondage helping them to go out of egypt towards the promised land micah chapter 6 verse 4 god divided the red sea and made them to walk as if through a dry land psalms 1069 he delivered them from all difficulties to reveal his super power god gave them such a great deliverance expecting great things from them god is not pleased in the sacrifice of thousands of rams and rivers of oil god has shown human being what is good god expects human beings to do that do justice be merciful to our beloved dalit brothers and sisters and others humble before god this is the charter of christian spirituality love one another god's power is shared in the clay jars with this expectation such spirituality will help us to worship god in spirit and truth and breathe the breath of god to grow in fellowship as a community to become one shepherd and one flock i conclude with a statement a christian is like a tea bag not much good until it has gone through hot water a christian is like a tea bag not much good until it has gone through hot water may god bless these words amen let us affirm our faith we believe in god who created everything with uniqueness and beauty and who ordained all us equals who lives among us who struggles along with us in our daily living for justice and peace we believe in jesus christ who values persons over systems who affirms the value of persons over things who rejects any custom or system that marginalizes people who associates and shares table with the poor without any discrimination who administers and advocates equality and justice who delivers the powerless and reforms society we believe in the holy spirit who is working amongst to bring peace justice and reconciliation to the whole cosmos we believe in one universal church and one baptism and the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins and the world to come dear friends in god 
this is the time for special prayers of those friends who have celebrated their birthdays and special days. Last week and this week, the members who celebrated their birthdays are 24th 10, Mr. Jijo Mathai, 26th 10, Mrs. Dr. Santi Sudha Monika, 27th 10, Ms. Shamila, secretary to the principal, on 28th 10, Jillu, our office assistant, 28th 10, Mr. Benny Jabakumar, BD1, on 29th 10, Mrs. Elizabeth Giri, a doctoral research scholar, on the 30th, Mr. Joel Azraya and Viswanath Jairaj, and on the 31st 10 October, Reverend Angolkar Dinesh celebrated their birthdays. Also, on the first of this month, Reverend Dr. Edwin Jabaraj, the professor in the New Testament department, celebrated his birthday. On the fifth, Mr. P. Sunny Devaraj, BD3, and on the sixth, Jonathan Vijay John of MTH1 celebrated their birthday. We thank God for all these children of God. Also, God has had our prayers and healed some of our friends from their sickness. We thank God for healing Reverend Kanagaraj, Miss Elakia, Mr. John Jacob and his family, and Brother Rotin, the cousin of Dr. Songram. They have been healed from their illness. Now we need to also pray for um, Mrs. Samarpita, MTH student, her husband and the in-laws are all down with COVID-19. We are called to pray for the family. Also, um, we have some losses in the Gurukul community. The auntie of our principal, Reverend Dr. John Samuel, has passed away last week. And a few other friends of our Gurukul community members have been gone to be with the Lord and we will pray for all these God's dear children. <clears throat> dear Lord our God, we thank you for your blessings showered upon us, especially upon all the student friends, our staff and our faculty members who have seen the new year during the last two weeks. Lord, we pray that your blessings will be upon them. Bless them, their services, their ministry, their family and their future. Let you be their shepherd and lead them comfortably. Bless them, O Lord, with the blessings of all that they need and all they, that they pray for. Lord, hold them by hand and lead them day by day. We thank you, Lord, for healing Brother, Brother Kanagaraj, Sister Ilakia, John Jacob and family, and Brother Rotin. Lord, how gracious you are. We thank you for listening to our prayers and healing these, our friends, from their sickness. Lord, we pray for Samar Pita, her family members, husband and in-laws, and for the principal's family and the families of the dear ones who have lost their dear ones during the past week. Lord, heal those who are sick and comfort those who are in need of your peace. We commit each and every one of them into your hand. Gracious Lord, remember us and hear our prayers and bless each one according to their needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kind of prayer and request. With this in mind, we alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 Let us intercede with God. God of equality, we pray for our Dalit brother and sister who are constantly discriminated in the workplace and in the provision of services, who are not paid what they deserve, who are not employed according to their potentiality and ability. Because they are Dalit, we pray, O oh God, for the eradication of such inequality and discrimination. We pray, O oh God, liberate them from all bondage. 
God of love, we pray for our Dalit brother and sister who are forbidden to marry outside their caste. They are rejected on the basis of their caste. Some have even lost their life because of inter-caste marriage within and outside the church. We pray for, for a heart that embraces value and love everyone equally with human dignity. God of Justice, we pray for our Dalit students who are deprived of education, who are not allowed to sit, learn with other children, who are constantly harassed inside the schools, colleges and universities, some of whom have even committed suicide, posting such injustice. We pray, O oh God, Teach us to accept and love one another as you have accepted and loved us. Help us to sensitive towards Dalit students in their constant fight for justice. God the Provider, we pray for our Dalit farmers who are oppressed by landlords whose debts have no end besides their continuous hard labors, who are despised and locked down upon, who are complete to commit suicide because of their unjust economic status. O oh God, help us to value the hard work of our Dalit brothers and sisters in producing food. We pray for our economic justice in our country, especially towards farmers. God of community, we pray for the churches in India as they continue to fight for the rights and upliftment of Dalit Christian, to bring equality within and outside church, along with the leaders, guide us in the right path, as a church, help us to facilitate a friendlier and inclusive environment for oppressed people. God of justice, let your justice roll down like water and righteousness like ever flowing streams. Amos 5.24 In our midst, enable us to be partners with you in this cause through Jesus Christ the compassionate and just liberator. We pray, O oh God, reform the church, help us to be a prophetic voice that will be heard by the society and lead them to root of caste. God of healer, we pray for the pandemic COVID-19 situation, the bereaved of the victims are the sickness, those who in hospitals and wounds, the doctors, nurses, health workers, and all other who involved with serving the people. We pray for our Gurukul community, the principal, teaching and non-teaching staff, students and their family members, the college council, the alumni. Let the expressions of truth and action, truth and action, renew our hearts and minds so that by the Holy Spirit of our Creator, God, we may honor one another as he may fear and breathe the breath of God in Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. Who are God? Who is ever present in the struggles, pain and suffering of people? Hallowed be your name, your kingdom of love and freedom come. Your will to do justice and right justice be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day courage to stand for what is right to demand for an equal share of your wealth for all forgive us your servitude to the status echo and give us will to behave agent of change lead us not into our attitude of complicity but deliver us from the danger of becoming for to the
villa, the power of judge and the power of liberty forever and ever. Amen. Quickly come as you promised.
seek justice voice out against oppression defend the marginalized and become an agent of peace may the creator god who responds to the cries of the oppressed the compassionate christ who is committed to the reign of god and the holy spirit who equips person to be disciples of jesus christ be with us this day forever amen oh.